again welcome back to my channel it's my it's your girl bridgie i see the same i haven't changed i have not grown taller or shorter <laughs> it's the same girl that you know and we're here to talk about issues that Afri africans who live in the diaspora my people the matter that i want to discuss with you tonight eh? even me yeah with all my age and my big age <laughs> And my experience in life, it is not enough to deal with this wahala. The wahala eh, is a lot. So, a young lady reached out to me a couple of weeks ago. She wanted to talk to me, which is not unusual for me on this platform. I get a lot of people reaching out to say, I want to talk to you about this. I want to discuss this. I need your advice. I need your counsel. I'm happy to do it. It doesn't cost me anything. Whatever I know, I share. And what I don't know, I ask you to go and find you know the solution for that i know they do pass myself what i know i tell you what i don't know i tell you i don't know how to deal with this because some people have some really complex when i mean complex extremely complex issues that <clears throat> so i know my limitation as a human being and i tell you what i can i'll give you what i know i'll tell you what i know or what i believe is the best solution to whatever problem you are going through but ultimately god is the one that you should go to because he's the one that made us he's the one that knows us he's the one that gave whatever we're going through he knows he's the omnipotent the omnipresent the omni everything so yeah so this young lady came to me and said and to be i'm stressed i'm depressed my marriage is falling apart i've got four children four one two three four and my first child is disabled. He's got special special needs. And in the UK, what they call special needs are usually children with disability, like learning disability, autism, and things like that. And I've got three other children, and my husband has abandoned me. My husband has abandoned me and ran off with another woman. This is a Nigerian. She's a Nigerian. And I said, oh, well, I was, when I hear something like that, oh my God, problem day, problem day, may God help us, problem day, ah, problem be like bicycle, you know, they finish. So this young lady told me about how she met her husband in the UK and they got together, you know, but she said, basically, the marriage has not been happy. It's always been problematic. The husband cheats. And eventually, the husband ran away from the house and followed another woman who is a Zimbabwean woman. And she she's a, what do I call her? She's like a, a stripper. A stripper. And left her. She's stressed. She was crying. Ah, I felt bad. I slept. Three, four children. And the, one of them is disabled. How is this happening? And that the husband will visit them. You know, the, the, the man will come and visit them and he will go away. He does whatever he likes. Whatever money he likes, he gives them. He doesn't care about their upbringing, their well-being and everything. Guys, you don't know. I'm very, very touched when I hear stories like this. It's really from women. But I said, okay. We were talking back and forth and I said, okay, what do you want to do? Because my first inclination when she told me the story was that if he left you, he went with another woman and you say he's living with that woman now you know and she actually sent me some evidence of this some the same woman this the stripper and they were living with the husband and they were doing love in tokyo and everything why do you still allow him to come back to come and be with you and to sleep with you and all that i was like oh i've got four children where would that start from when i heard that yeah i don't know how i felt but my my head just exploded i was like what the f what do you mean so this man disrespected you treated you so badly left you with four children one of the, the children is disabled and went to be another woman to be enjoying himself she sent me so many videos where the guy was enjoying himself he was drinking smoking pot and you know just having a good time I said, wow ah, this is bad this is so bad so i asked her say what do you want to do she said that she wants me to talk to the guy to come back to come back home to london hmm. i thought about it and i said well i don't have that power i wish i did i had one wonderful you know brand 
that will just use to touch people and say, you, this man, go back to your family, love your children, love your wife, and it will happen. But I don't. He's an adult. He can make his own decision. He's got the mental capacity to do whatever he wants to do. Now, if you're telling me that he's making what we call in social, social work unwise decisions, that's a different thing. I don't have power over that. So, no, we'll talk to him. I don't want the relationship to end. I love him. I want him to come back. I just want him to help me. I'm with the children 24 hours a day. And I am fed up. I am tired. I am stressed. My chest is spinning me. She was telling me that her chest is spinning her. She needs to go to the hospital. And when she needs to go to the hospital, she used to drag the children along because there's nobody to mind the children. I was like, oh my God, what is this? I said, give me his number. So she did. And I tried to call the guy. Initially, I couldn't get him. Later, I got him. I called him. I said, well, I introduced myself. And I said, um, I need to talk to you about your wife. And I asked him, I said, why did you choose to leave your wife with four children? One of your child is disabled. And you ran off with another woman who is a stripper. And you are having a good time. And you left your wife. She's stressed. She's depressed. She's crying every day. She's not coping. Why? Ah, I don't like my mother in the social media. And eh, whatever. And eh, I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to do that. I say, you know what? This is not about you. Or what you want or what you need me as you see me here so i am i consider myself an advocate and i advocate for women and i advocate for nigerians in diaspora you are both nigerians and i'm coming in to mediate to see what we can do to resolve this issue he said oh okay now came down i said no oh, auntie actually if i tell you what you what i've been through in the hands of this woman you know you will not believe it I said, tell me, I have all the time. I was driving that day. I went on a very long, um, I went to see someone in a very far place. I said, tell me. I put my phone on, connected it to the, uh, to the car on, on Bluetooth. I said, tell me. She said, ah, he said, this woman that you're talking about, I do love her. I love my children so much. I want to be involved. I want to be in their life. But she won't let me. She's always calling police for me to arrest me. I can't count kind the of number of times that she's called police to arrest me. I've been locked up and the stress was getting too much. We don't get that long. She doesn't listen. If you want to do something, it's not in her way. She will never agree. It has to be what she wants. She doesn't know how to compromise. She doesn't know how to meet you halfway. It has to be the way she wants it. I say, okay. It's a good thing that you're talking to me now because irrespective of whatever you say, I'm still going to do the video. So I... People always say, hear from the other side. So that's why I'm even calling you. I'm doing you a favor by calling you because I want to hear what you have to say. This woman told me so many horrendous things. She sent me videos. And I saw the videos of you frolicking with other women. What do you have to say for yourself? Eh, actually, eh, that was old videos. It's old videos. I said, eh, it's old videos. I'm not with that woman anymore. I don't date her anymore. We're not even talking. Okay, good. Fine, we're not talking. So what are you going to do about what I've just told you about your wife and the difficulties she's having with the children? And I said something to him. I said, you know what? You see, that girl, she's your wife, right? She's the mother of your children. If you drive her crazy, your children are going to end up crazy. Everything she experiences, the children will experience. Because you know what? Children, they are like carbon copy. Everything they see is what they copy. If she's mad, her children will be mad. So do you want that for your children? He said, no, 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 no. Auntie, I don't want that. I love my children so much. I don't want that. What can I do? I said, okay, now we're talking. So first of all, let's establish the fact that you were cheating. He said, no, I didn't do anything, no. Uh, she's always hacking my phone. She hacked my email. She did this, she did this. I said, come on. Don't lie. These are evidence. Whether it happened in 2021 or it happened in 2018 or 19 or 20, you cheated. She's got evidence of it. With you and this tripper doing love in Tokyo. You are dancing. You see them, they were dancing. You know, he was doing love with the girl. So if she doesn't trust you and she doesn't believe you, whatever you tell her, I understand why. Because you've broken the trust. The issue of her calling police for you 
That she didn't tell me. But she did tell me that he laid his hands on her uh, previously when he was living with when they were living together in London. And when the police come, she said she even lied. She said, oh, no, it's nothing like that. She covered him so that we will not get a criminal record. But what she was telling me was, what he was telling me was completely different. But you know what? In summary, what I can deduct from this whole scenario is that there's a lot of mess going on. And there are four children in between them. One of the child, the first child, has got disability. And so he's got more needs than a, an average child. This woman is stressed. She's depressed. She's struggling to cope. And you are out there. Hey, he told me, he said, yeah, she's, she's the one. She's the one that made me run. I ran because I wanted to save my life. Hey, okay, okay, what are we going to do now? She already told me that the only reason why he comes home is because he's only got temporary residence. He hasn't got his permanent, he's got, he hasn't got his British passport. And she believes that whenever he gets his British passport, that's the end. Now he's got, he's got residency, but it's not like, it's not like having your passport yet. It's not indefinite. It's definite. Yeah, I was the only one that was explaining to her between what it means to have indefinite leave and definite leave. Definite leave expires. Indefinite means stay forever as you want. Nobody's going to question you because you have a right to be here. And she believes that the reason why he's still coming around is for him to get his permanent, you know, indefinite leave and get his passport and then he's out. So I said to him, I spoke to him and said, you know what, I'm older than both of you. Hmm? I can be a senior sister to both of you. I said, she, so, she told me so many things about how she calls your family and the family, they are not empathizing with her. The mother will not tell her that, uh, after all, you should be praying. She said she has prayed and prayed and prayed. She's tired of praying. She will call your, your sister. Sister will say, after all, still picking your call. What if it doesn't pick your call? I said, are you happy that this woman is, she's got chest pain. I said, do you know what? When somebody is sad, you are unhappy. Eh? You know what it causes? It causes illness. Unhappiness. Being perpetually sad, depressed, causes so many illnesses. These are scientifically proven illnesses, so it's not, I'm just manufacturing them all. Mm -hmm. So that you know, you that is in that circumstances. Watching this video today, you can know what I'm talking about. I say, you really want this girl to die? Don't you know what is happening in the UK, in the US, regarding couples? You really want her to die? I'm sure there's a point where you loved her. Irrespective of what happened, I'm not there. Because this is, he say, he sh uh, he, uh, she says, he says, she says. I'm not there. I'm not judging you. But what do you want to do? He said, okay, he needs time. He needs time to put himself together. He will go, he's going to come back. Because, you know what she was saying to me? She said, if he can just take the children for a week or two, let me just have some rest. Right. When she said that, I understand that completely because looking after children is not a joke in the diaspora. Looking after a child with special needs is even added wahala. She has four children. And you are there enjoying yourself with other women. What does that say about you? And you say you love your children. I say, no, you don't love your children. Yeah, London is too expensive. If I come to London, even if I start to rent a room, it's so expensive. Where I am now, it's cheaper. I say, this is not about you. It's about your children. This woman is, she's drowning. She cannot look after these children. Two, four, seven, three, three, six, six, five days a year. What are you going to do? He now started talking about how he was making plans to relocate back and wherever and wherever and wherever. But by the time I could go back to her and say, this is what I, he told me, this is my conversation with him, because he was the one that was not calling me. I told him, I said, call her and apologize. You've hurt this woman so much. And you know what? He never accepted that he cheated. I find that, I don't even know how, how to describe how I, fe I found that young man. What do you think you did wrong in this relationship? This guy will never admit to anything. He's a neighbor boy. He never admitted to anything. He said, ah, the only thing I did is that I saved my life. So are you 
denying that you didn't cheat or that you didn't have all these women that you, this girl this particular girl that you were living in you moved into a house without and everything he denied it all i said i saw the video how can you deny you i saw you in a video he said hey, that was a long time ago i said doesn't matter whether it was a long time ago it is now she she saw it and he broke the trust you are her husband you moved away now you are visiting her like a guest you will come and I was really mad at her when she told me that, that he's visiting her. He will still sleep with her and then he will go back. <sighs> this matter was so complex. By the time I came back to her, I said, okay. He's sorry. He's called you. He's apologized. He wants to come back. He wants to help with the children and everything. Give him a chance. She said, auntie, no. I believe he's only coming back because he hasn't got his permanent residence. He's calculative and very manipulative. By the time he comes back and he's able to secure his passport and get his British passport, he will go. He will never come back. He will leave me with these children. So no. Me too. I'm locking down. That's it. He cannot come to my house. I told him if he come, I'm going to call the police to arrest him. I said, hey. I was not begging him. I said, no. This is what he told me. He said, he said no. He, she said, he's a liar. Whatever he's telling you is not true. Hey. I've never done marriage counseling before. I'm not a trained counselor. But this was fire for fire. Calm down. You say he's coming down. Forgive him. He's apologized. She said, no, 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 no. I know his plans. So quite a long story short, my people. I could not resolve that matter. That was when the guy now started calling me. Because what she now did was that she blocked him everywhere. Email everything phone whatsapp everything she blocked him so he had no access to her this young man i started calling me frantically eventually i told him i said you know what there's no point calling me i tried i tried to talk to her but i think you hurt her so deeply that she feels that the only reason why you still even want to make it, you want to try is because you know you want to get your permanent residence so she feels that the only way she can hurt you back is to make sure she, you don't get it and if you don't come to her, you cannot get it. So she wants to punish you. So I appealed to her. I begged her to forgive you, but she said no. And I don't blame her for not accepting you back because you've broken the trust. You did not even, you know, the thing I find most astounding or so, you know, the whole scenario, the whole stories that I've shared with you guys, the one thing that I found about this couple was that none of them ever owned up to what they did that was wrong. None of them. Not the man, not the woman. I'm perfect. I did everything right. He's the one that is the problem. Oh, I'm perfect. She's wrong. She's crazy. She calls the police. I did, I, I did everything right. She's the problem. The only thing I did was save my life by running away from London. You guys cannot solve any problem. They keep going to family members who don't live in the UK. Family members are adding fuel to it. And things have just deteriorated. Everything has deteriorated to point zero. So I said to him, I said, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not a trained therapist. This is not my domain. If it's small, small issues here, yeah, I can, based on my life experience and my big age, I can give advice, but for deep, very, very complex issues like this, you need a therapist. And she actually told me that she booked a therapist before when she saw that he wasn't ready and he's still carrying on with this girl. Then she canceled it. But he told me that oh, this was three, four years ago. I'm not even talking to that girl now. But you did not even accept that you were sleeping with this, with this girl or that you had something. But I have videos of you doing love, dancing, doing everything together. I have the video she shared with me that she took from your phone. You are lying. And she never told me the true picture of how she was calling police of him on him, you know, always disrespectful and telling the children to insult him. She he told me so many things about how he didn't feel he didn't feel respected in his own home. He felt like you know he was working on eggshells. Egg Any little thing he does that she's gonna call the police and he was arrested so many times. So it's not that you know they're both of them. You know, they, they cannot communicate. There was no understanding. It was just a very cantacross. And, you know, it's like a, a, a relationship that was like a volcanic relationship that was just erupting. You know, erupting from one level to the other. So I said to him, I said, I'm sorry. 
this one you need jesus you need jesus for this one i'm too small i'm not even assistant jesus i cannot help you you need a therapist and you need people to this woman is hot she's broken she's depressed and you need someone that can reach her unfortunately i cannot reach her because it takes more than a phone call they need to invite both of you to sit down and talk okay these are my concerns these are my issues and then walk through it and that is what a therapist can do i can do it not on a phone call to you not on a phone call to her so i just pray that god will help them because hmm, i don't want to hear another story of a woman that got depressed and did something crazy to herself or her children i told him i said whatever you are doing think about your four children any woman you are going to marry now that will give you children not like those ones that you already have you'll be visiting your family as if you are a stranger you go and stay outside london and you are living your life your best life they say hey, this is where i have peace of mind what about your children they didn't ask for this i'm not talking about the woman if the relationship doesn't work help out with the children you brought these children to this world by the two of you you are adults these children never asked to be brought to this to this world so you are both responsible don't leave the children to her alone because she cannot cope she's stressed she's going mental she's losing her mind that's where we left it to. So the moral of the story is that um, marriages are very complex. I used to question, I say, yeah, Obodo Yugo marriages, are they cursed? Are they cursed? Are they, is there a demonic force somewhere that is always attacking marriages? It's true. I'm sure there is. I believe it now. But when the chain of communication is broken completely, and especially when people do not accept the responsibility for what they have done to hurt other people you are my wife you are my husband this is what i did i hurt you i acknowledge that i am sorry i won't do it again then the relationship cannot proceed when you are both standing your ground and say oh i did right and the woman is saying i did right could it work i'm sorry could it work for anything to move forward for you to have growth and progress in your relationship there needs to be accountability and that's me saying, I'm, this is what I did that was wrong. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And then forgiveness. But both of you are not even ready. So I tried to save a marriage, but I failed. I did. I failed. And if you are watching me, both you, him, and her, I hope you do the right thing. Not for yourselves, because you are adults, but for your children going forward. Because those children did not ask to be in this relationship. You too brought them in. And you are both responsible for their well-being to make sure that they turn out to be very productive adults, all grounded human beings that are loved and they grow up to become everything that God has destined them to be. That is your responsibility. You chose to bring this strength to this world. This is what you have chosen to do. And I hope you do the right thing. So guys, I'm just going to leave you here today. Uh, it's quite a complex one. Like I said, I was very, very helpless. Uh, I couldn't do much with this one. But you know what? We win some, we lose some. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section. And I will speak to you in my next video. Thanks a lot for watching. I love you.